The following is a paid program and does not necessarily reflect the views or ideas of the staff or management of KWSH or the 110 Broadcast Group. Estongo Seminologi Jeremy Fultz, Cheho Jifkadosen, Mojinita Hadam Nitta He Dajan Popohoyan. I am your host, Jeremy Fultz, and welcome to the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma radio program where we keep you informed of what's going on in on the res in the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma. And so Alongside of me today, unhissy, my friend, my partner in crime. It's not Delaney Pinnock today, though. Mark Williams, the not communications today. director. Not today. Not today. So welcome, Mark, to the show. Oh, Thank there, you. Thank there was you. a little bit of a there was a little bit of applause there. Not <laughs> as much bit. as Delaney usually gets. I have to earn that applause. Uh, yeah, you, you got to you got to put the time in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good to be here. Gonna be here. Good deal, good deal. And so we want to have a recap about what happened this weekend at the general council meeting. We have some unofficial results we'd like to read. And you know, we have a our normal rundown that we normally do between the departments and going over what's gonna happen, any announcements coming from the government or from the uh administration office. But before we start, Mark. Did you hear about the cow that got out in Oklahoma City yesterday? I saw something about that. It, um, it was all over the news. Yeah, you know there was a on helicopter. Video. Yeah, on video there's a helicopter that spotted this cow, and people tried to pin the cow. I guess it got out over by the stockyards, and there's some people trying to pin this cow against the fence. Mind you, a fi- uh, Oklahoma City fence. Right. You know, Oklahoma City fences aren't as good as down here fences. You know, for that's a one. Close to I-40 and pin. They tried to pin it with a side-by-side. You know, with a side-by-side? You know, yeah. those those side-by-sides. Couldn't do it. So out of nowhere, you know, this helicopter's got this cow framed up on the video. Out of nowhere, this guy comes speeding on the, the horse, ropes the cow, and then another guy comes on another horse, gets the legs. You know, it's kind of normal for us to see that around here. Mm-hmm. Cow's getting out. But, you know, I guess it doesn't happen too often in the city. I just thought it was funny. No point to the joke, really. <laughs> or no, no no, point to the story. But it did remind me a very important uh, fact about cows. Did you know cows are good with math? I didn't know that. Do you know how they're good with math? No, I don't. Because of all the calculators. Moo. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well. And then last week, uh, don't forget, uh, there was an event hosted by Dana Miller, the Rock the Native Vote. Um, it was good seeing a lot of people out, some good hot dogs, some good entertainment. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chabon Tiger, um, what was the other guy's name? The young guy? Yeah. Um, I can't remember his name, but he's Hard really good. Man, he's he really totally good. just yeah. good, good guitar player. You know, there was, a, there was a thought that I might be able to be there and strum on the guitar. But after hearing the talent that was there, I just I'm glad I stayed where I stayed. Didn't want to follow that. Right? Yeah, there's yeah. there's no way I could follow that. But it was good, you know. And it's also getting that time for elections. A lot of seats, including like the Oklahoma governor's race, Senate. If you don't vote, you lose your voice. So uh, go register to vote. And Fourth and Eighth Sunday is coming up. This weekend is going to be June the twelfth. And like we mentioned every week, some of these churches may or may not be having their church meetings. And so if you know anyone that goes and you want to check uh, just to make sure that they're having one before you show up, because I'd hate for you to show up and they went somewhere else that weekend. But the one that's scheduled for this weekend is Arbica, Big Arbor, Hickory Ground Number 1, High Springs, Okima, High Springs, Kanawha, 
Hilltop, Little Casita, Middle Creek Number One, New Arbor, Rock Springs, Anadarko, Ryle Community, Seminole Baptist, Salt Creek Baptist, Snake Creek One and Two, Trenton, Vian Creek, and Wegawa. Those are your churches having church meetings this weekend, Mark. That's usually where Delaney doesn't say anything. You're, yeah, you're I'm doing a pretty I'm good to job. Do, I'm trying to do a Delaney <laughs> impression here. Oh, good, good job. Am I, am I getting close? Yeah. yeah. So, what'd you do this weekend? Uh, well, you mentioned the council meeting, so we had that for half the day. And um, what did I do? Oh, uh, I saw the new uh, Top Gun movie, Maverick. Oh yeah, what'd you yeah, think? Went to no go spoilers it. though. Yeah, no spoilers. It. it was good. It was really good. Um, you know, a big fan of the original, the classic, and so I was excited and pretty hyped to see it. But, uh, yeah, I really liked it. So would you recommend re-watching the first one before you go watch this one? If it's been a while since you've seen it? Well, not really, not really. They bring some of the characters back, but um, they, do, they do a good job of kind of recapping what happened in the original. So you probably don't have to see it, but it wouldn't hurt. I, I remember the Nintendo game, Top Gun. I do remember that. But I don't re really remember the movie. Really? Yeah. I, I remember a little <laughs> bit of the movie, but I just re I remember the video you game. You remember some of the characters in, oh, yeah. in the movie? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, there's some characters that play a big part, you know, especially Maverick, but um, there's some other ones. I don't want to, I guess, spoil it, but yeah, definitely go check it out. Good deal. We'll probably be about a year and a half before I do that. You know me. And well, you have HBO Max too, so it'll probably be on there. Yeah. 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 We all share one password, right? Um, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm still still trying to get it from you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And so we already went over the fourth and eighth Sundays coming up this weekend. Every week, you know, we talk about the ones that have started your journey, and this week's no different. We want to keep those families in mind for the ones that have started their journey um keep those families in your prayers and then all the family members that have walked on you know we want to remember them as well uh friends it, it doesn't go you know we i have a friend whose services today from cancer and keep their friends or their family in mind as well but uh usually like we do about this time every week we want to take a moment of silence uh, for the ones that have started their journey. So, Mado, Mado. And so let's get into it. This weekend, we, we did have the general council meeting, the quarterly general council meeting that took place at the Miccosukee Mission at the council house and also is a hybrid meeting via Ring Central. The meeting started at 10 a.m. And, Mark, if you want to, let's just go through the new business, and then we'll get to the uh, – there wasn't any old business or unfinished business there. So, uh, TO 2022-04 passed a tribal ordinance of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma amending the Employment Relations Code at Title 11, Chapter 7, titled Employee Benefits of the Seminole Nation Code of Laws, that passed 20 yes, 4 no, 0 abstains. And so you got 20-2205, uh, which also passed uh, as a tribal ordinance of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma, amending the General Council Code at Title 18A, Chapter 3, titled School Clothing Program. Uh, TR 2022-50, which was a tribal resolution approving a modification to the fiscal year 2022 Seminole Nation Public Transit FTA budget and the fiscal year 2022 comprehensive budget, and the sponsor withdrew that one. Then we have uh, TR 202251, a tribal resolution by the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma approving a modification to the FY 2022 Seminole Nation Public Transit Dialysis Transport budget and the FY 2022 comprehensive budget, and that was also withdrawn. TR 2022-52 uh, was also withdrawn by the sponsor, which was a tribal resolution approving a modification to the fiscal year 2022 transportation BIA uh, government to government budget or G2G budget and the fiscal year 2022 comprehensive budget. And that withdrew, right? Yep. Okay. Sponsor withdrew that one as well. Uh, 
2022-53 was the tribal resolution of the General Council of the Seminole Nation uh, approving the transportation BIA CRRSAA budget for the fiscal year 2022 and incorporation into the fiscal year 2022 comprehensive budget, and that one passed. TR 2022-54, which was the tribal resolution approving a modification to the fiscal year 2022 Seminole Nation Fiscal Services Accounting Budget and the Fiscal Year 2022 Comprehensive Budget. The sponsor withdrew that one. And we are at 2022-55, uh, introduced by the Finance Committee, which was a resolution uh, approving a modification to the Fiscal Year 22 Tribal Enrollment BIA ATG Budget and the Fiscal Year 2022 Comprehensive Budget, and that one passed. TR 2022-56, a tribal resolution approving the budget modification of the tribal court BIA for fiscal year 2021 and amending to the fiscal year 2021 comprehensive budget and that passed 23 yes, two no, zero abstentions. Okay, this one also passed 2022-57, a tribal resolution approving the Child Care CARES Act funds for fiscal year 2021 and the incorporation into the fiscal year 2021 comprehensive budget. TR 2022-58, a tribal resolution approving the child care CRRSA DHHS number 21 Pro KCC5 budget for fiscal year 2021 and incorporation into the fiscal year 2021 comprehensive budget. That passed 22 yes, two no, zero abstentions. 2022-59 was a tribal resolution uh, approving the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, LIHEAP, AR, the ARPA budget for the fiscal year 2022 and incorporation into the fiscal year 2022 comprehensive budget. And that one passed 18 yes, six no. TR 2022-60, a tribal resolution authorizing and directing the Attorney General to investigate and seek relief on behalf of the nation and its members against unlawful state taxation within the boundaries of the Seminole Nation Reservation. That passed 21 yes, 4 no, 0 abstentions. And then we have 2021, which was a resolution authorizing Seminole Nation Division of Commerce to establish, um, how do you say that? I'm not sure. Which one? On 61. 61. Where are we at? Agreement for Boxy Hyatty, Hyatta, uh, which is an LLC, and approving the operating agreement for Boxy Hyatta LLC, making tomorrow, I believe. Which uh, that was withdrew by the sponsor. All right. TR twenty twenty two. Sorry, I was looking down at the other business. <laughs> TR twenty twenty two dash sixty two, a tribal resolution of the. General Counsel of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma confirming the appointment of Billy Emerson Shepard to the Gaming Enterprise Board. That passed 16 yes, 9 no, 0 abstentions. Okay, and this is one of the big ones here. 2022-63, uh, which was a tribal resolution approving a one-time distribution from the uh, American Rescue, Rescue Plan Act of $500 to each eligible tribal member for the purpose of household assistance in accordance with the state local fiscal recovery funds final rule and that one passed or table i'm sorry that was tabled uh 16 yes nine no all the phones about started ringing there mark <laughs> <laughs> you get delaney back in there <laughs> see it's not as easy as I'm, they think Del <laughs> delaney's still here in the studio today he's just he is here in his contract here. i guess but <laughs> uh tr 2022-64 a tribal resolution approving a one-time appropriation of $2,225,000 from the American Rescue Plan Act of the 2021 funds to the ARPA Tribal School Clothing Program. That passed 19 yes, 6 no, 0 abstentions. And then there's 2022-65, which was a resolution uh, approving the suspension of the Judgment Fund School Clothing Program only upon the approval of 2022-64 and to be reinstated once the funds from 2022-64 have been expended or on January 1st, 
2025, and that passed. All right, and then that was all of new business, but then there was other business involved in some verbal tribal resolutions, and so we'll go over those as well. Verbal tribal resolution 2022-66, declaring vacant the council seat of Andrea Scraper Alexander of the Nuskup Harjo Band and Natalie Harjo of the Thawathli Band, and that passed 25 yes, zero no, zero abstentions. Another verbal uh, resolution, 2022-67, declaring that the general council meeting convened in the gymnasium, which should be the next one coming up here uh, here in a couple of weeks. Yep. And that passed, 17 yes, 3 no, 5 abstains. And then TR 2022-68, the tribal resolution of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma, amending the program that benefits active, eligible, historically significant churches, and ceremonial grounds to include active, eligible, historically significant churches and ceremonial grounds within a certain geographical distance of the boundaries of the Seminole Nation Reservation. That passed 13 yes, 9 no, and 2 abstentions. And then prayer by Representative Coleman, meeting adjourned at 1.30 p.m. And that was the unofficial results for the general council meeting that was held on saturday and as mark said there will be there is an announcement that there will probably be a special call meeting coming up in a few weeks and so you'll start seeing those band notification for band meetings coming out and that's going to be on the seminole nation of oklahoma facebook page and so just keep your eyes open and when we get notifications of them we will notify you here on the radio show and so, also, the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma Light Heap of Cooling Assistance beginning June 13, 2022. For questions and or additional information, contact Seminole Nation Social Services, 405-257-6257 between 8 and 5, Monday through Friday. And then also, due to the high number of applications, the lobby will remain closed. Applications will be located outside the lobby or available by mail and will be accepted by fax, mail, and or social services drop box. Again, that's LIHEAP, which is the assistance, the cooling assistance beginning June 13th. All right, Mark, this is where you usually do the next one, which is the diabetes program. So we have, this is weather permitting, by the way, so we're just maybe an hour or so from this one happening, but the Brown Bag uh, Fitness, presented by the Civil Nation Diabetes Program, by our friend Jerome Harrison, who will be at the complex. Now, this one's going to be, yes, at the complex uh, from 12.10 p.m. to 12.45 uh, Mondays more, and Wednesdays are at the, at the Trefecne Wellness Center, yeah, yeah. same time, uh, 12, 10, 12, 45. And all sessions are outside. So unless you want to just get real lunch be out there, get wet, you know, you might want to let it dry out a little bit, but I'm sure Jerome will let us know if it gets canceled. You're right. Yep. And if you have any questions regarding that, contact Jerome 405-234-5247. And then also... Kyla Harjo usually helps out with these, and her phone number is 405-234-5246. And then there's also a free jump rope camp June 21st or 23rd at the Reynolds Wellness Center here in Seminole, Oklahoma. And it's open to all local PE teachers, youth exercise leaders, and kids third through 12th grade next year grades to register coaches individual or jump rope teams call 405-257-7364 or if you have any questions contact our friend scott robinson or robison at 405-257-7314 405-683-1690 led by the bouncing bulldogs of durham north carolina the seven-time USA Junior Grand National Champions and the World Jump Rope Federation Champions. Have you ever been to one of those, Mark? Um, Those jump rope contests? I've been to one, yes. Justice Justice had one not too long ago. So, I I mean, that's probably the closest thing I've seen. My cousin signed up for one one year, and they went down, I think it was to Florida, 
where they did it and you know they were all excited about going and some of these teams are on the yeah. different level yeah you know when they jump so it'll be interesting to go out there and see the seven time usa junior grand national champion jump rope team so this next event is uh something that jeremy will be participating in i think the 5k Jeremy Miller, Miller will be <laughs> participating in. Jeremy Fultz, maybe oh, not. Oh, not Fultz. Okay, yeah. okay. I guess I read that wrong. So uh, July 16th will be the 5K color run uh, starting at 8 o'clock, uh, 8 a.m. Uh, the first 100 to show up and register will receive a free T-shirt. This is also brought to you by the Diabetes Program. Uh, these guys are doing a lot of stuff. Um, you can also contact Jerome Harrison for more information on that at 405-584-7293. That's on July 16th at 8 o'clock at the uh, Mikasuki Mission. Is Jerome's video next coming out, or is it Kyla's? We have Kyla's coming up. Jerome's in it, though. Jerome makes a cameo, a special appearance in Kyla's uh, new video coming up. I think a very well worth the time and watching the video because... I think all of us had fun filming that video. Yeah, so it was a little fun. We did a, little, a, a couple of green a green screen scenes, and uh, Jerome had fun doing it. So Probably the same special effects as Top Gun that we mentioned earlier. Same effects, same budget probably. Same budget, yeah. yeah. same budget. Yep. Yeah. So you can either take your time and go watch a two-hour Top Gun movie or go watch a free Seminole Nation of Oklahoma Diabetes Program video. Same special effects. Same act, you know, same level of actors. Yeah, pretty much. I yeah. mean, it, I mean, you, when Jerome and Tyler, apple when, apples. when they get behind the camera, just you know, magic happens. Yep, with sure those guys. enough. Sure enough. So uh, when it comes out, we'll make, be able to put those previews out there, and y'all go watch the videos for free too. For free, yeah. Save save your fifteen dollars and your ten dollar popcorn, and yeah. watch the diabetes video. It'll be worth it. There you go. <laughs> All right. Good plug. The COVID-19 booster shots are available. This uh, CDC and prevention recommends a Pfizer COVID booster shot for children's age 5 to 11 in at least five months after their primary vaccination series. As infections are on the rise, if the we woke Indian Health Services are offering boosters to 5 to 11-year-old. If you're interested, call 405 405- Two five seven seven three five one four zero five two five seven seven three five two to schedule an appointment. So that that's the same two different numbers seven three five one or seven three five two. You know, Mark, I was thinking the other day. I hope people when they hear our radio show sit down with a pen and a paper mm-hmm. because boy, we sure do go through some we, phone we numbers. We kind of do sometimes, yeah. And yeah. there's a good example. There's two numbers there too. Yep. Coda did uh, get his shot too. From, oh. from these nice. from the IHS. So, yeah, definitely get to go Look, out there if you can. Communications is the next one That's up. Communication news. So this is basically, yeah, talking about the uh, uh, video that we just released. It's uh, when we, we received an invitation from the Loxahatchee Battlefield Preservation Preservationists and the Seminole Tribe of Florida to visit the battle site that took place in 1838, which would lead to the removal known as the Trail of Tears. Uh, this was a pretty historic event as this was a return 184 years in the making. Uh, Chief uh, Lewis Johnson, the Honor Guard, uh, Historic Preservation Department, and myself, we all went down there and, um, and I documented the event. And um, it was, uh, it was a, very, uh, it was a very special and um, important time, I think. And so you check out our Facebook page, you'll see a little video, a little recap of the day. And um, there'll be some links that's going to be on the historic preservation department site that goes into more in depth on the the speech given by chief and Jake tiger and uh, Rodney factor. And that video is located on the Seminole nation of Oklahoma Facebook page currently. And uh, like Mark mentioned, the historic preservation office is also doing a short series, but you know, Jake usually gives us a, did you know, but wasn't able to do that today because he's up in Oklahoma city um, getting ready to film something for uh, the, the the nation. And so I, Mr. Jeremy Fultz, just throw that out there, came up with a little something-something for okay. June 4th, 1838. Got? Did you know the Seminoles burned? I had to go there, huh? The Seminoles burned the abandoned Fort Dade and the bridge 
on the Willacoochee River. Then the Seminoles disappeared shortly after the skirmish. Did you know? I actually did know that. Did you? I actually did know that. And I think that was one of the things about going down to Florida. We heard a lot of good speeches and historians speaking. And I remember hearing about that. Yep. And, and it, Jake. Jake's always telling me some good <laughs> stuff too. So I heard it from Jake. And so a shout out to their Facebook page for the Historic Preservation Office. And uh, check out their Facebook page. And so that was our Did You Know segment brought to you by the Historic Preservation Office of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma. And Jeremy Fultz. <laughs> and the Honor Guard. Any service members with the honorable discharge, the Honor Guard needs some help. Uh, give Rex Haley a call at 405-220-3542. Or you can email Rex at Haley, H-A-I-L-E-Y dot R at sno-nsn.gov. They've done several funerals, several powwows, uh, bringing in the colors, and so bringing in the flag. And so um, if you would like to help, just give Rex a call. And so May is Foster Care Awareness Month. Uh, to make a difference, you can reach out to the Seminole Nation Indian Child Welf- Welfare. Um, check out, they have a Facebook page. They do a lot of stuff, keeping people informed. Uh, if you want to apply to be a foster parent, you can reach out to them. They have a phone number that you can call them at, which is uh, 405-257-9038 to find more information about becoming a foster parent. May sure was foster care awareness month. It's June now, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, But don't that don't, shouldn't stop you from reaching out to them. That's true. That's true. Every month should be foster care awareness month. That's right. Right. That's right. right. And so a couple of announcements from job placement and training. The summer youth uh, with the CPN um, has summer youth jobs available, four to six weeks paid vocational experience, working at least 20 hours a week. Uh, To be eligible, must be 16 years or older, must be a member of a federally recognized tribe, must reside in one of the following counties, Potawatomi, Payne, Lincoln, Cleveland, Seminole, or Oklahoma County East of Post Road, complete an application, be fully vaccinated. But with that, the summer youth job fair starts tomorrow. There is an applic- or there is a announcement on the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma web or Facebook page, and come by, come visit us. We will be out there, and that starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. goes to 3 p.m. and it's located at the old Bingo Hall. And so swing by if you're a youth. Summer youth looking for a job, come by and apply. Bring uh, your birth certificate or driver's license, proof of residence, like a utility bill, travel enrollment card or CDIB, a social security card, your income for the last six months, and a report card. And news from the language department. They are looking for some fluent Seminole speakers. Uh, to help translate uh, some words. The guys are working on a project. Uh, it's a book. We've got three projects we're working on, all <laughs> simultaneous. And it's, you know, the more speakers we have, the better. And so give us a call. Give, give us a call, too, 405-562-5567. Um, you don't have to be know how to read or write the language. We just We're just looking for speakers to help us translate. So we'll do all the rest of it. So we have uh, a notice from the Veterans Committee. Uh, they would like to recognize all our Civil Nation veterans and those who have served in the United States Armed Forces. Uh, they're planning to recognize the veterans in the upcoming Veterans Center. Uh, if you can reach out to them, uh, they're looking for some photos and some um, information about uh, who you want to recognize. You can reach out to Frank Alexander at FLA, FL Alexander at ymail.com uh, include the name rank branch of service and uh, any accommodations that they received jobs so if you're looking for jobs there are plenty of jobs open on the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma reservation the uh, if you go to sno-nsn.gov ASAP child care education courts domestic domestic violence uh, or Indian child welfare IT language job placement and training Light horse, maintenance, OAP, 
And then also, if you're looking for a job with the casino, SeminoleNation.Casino, go to the career tabs, and there are several positions open. And then the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma Gaming Agency has a position open for surveillance operator at the River Miss Casino in Kanawha and Wewoka. So uh, definitely go take a look there. And then if you want to go to Sindoc, uh, Sindoc.applicantpro.com. They're looking for jobs as well, or looking for people uh, to fulfill these jobs as well. So, apply. Community tab now, Mark. So, I'm um, drawing a blank here on the website. Uh, so, yeah, we have, uh, if you have any news or um, events you have coming up, things you want to announce on the Seminole Nation uh, social media, contact Seminole Nation, I'm Seminole Media at gmail.com. We will post it to the community and events page. And then also, last day, this is just like a PSA, last day to take limbs to the county barn is going to be July 5th. That's 1200 Montgomery, located behind Seminole, the Seminole Animal Shelter. So if you still have limbs out there from the tornado, make sure you get them out there. And we have uh, some birthdays. A quick shout out to these um, people celebrating the birthdays. Sierra Rivas, our friend Sierra Rivas, uh, June Hill, Tanner Sturgeon, Tier Michelle Rawls, Maria Richard, Leandra Wind, Kamora Kozar, Eddie Bruner. Who's that? Diggity Mac. And then we have Rick, Rick Carpenter Car and uh, Melody Givens. Kaylee Givens, and then we have a belated birthday to a Kissy Lena, and then our friend Bomb. Yeah. Oh, and don't forget, communication director Mark Williams has got a birthday in there too. So happy birthday, Mark! I'll I'll be giving out my cash app for that. Gonna, <laughs> gonna... Good deal. And you know, we we get some of these birthdays from looking up Facebook, but we also get these birthdays from people calling in, like uh, Alice Matt called us yesterday, a couple or last week. We got phone calls from a lot of friends and, mm -hmm. you know, even like uh, people re reaching out to us on Facebook, like Johnny Ringo from Texas, <laughs> that's, that's you right. know, cer certain people like to hear, you know, the news. And so they, uh, I guess just let us know we're doing an okay job too. So we appreciate all that, but you can catch the rebroadcast of this radio show on the Facebook page, YouTube, and the tribal website, SNO-NSN.gov. For the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma every Wednesday around 8 p.m. If you have news or announcements you want to share on the Community and Events Facebook page, please email the communications staff at seminolemedia at gmail.com or call 405-652-7251. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, tune in every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on KWSH 97.7 FM or the legendary 1260 a.m. for radio producers. Producer and co-host today, Mark Williams, engineer Dennis Burton. We'll see you next week. I'm Jeremy Fultz, Jim Benathes, Mado.